What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one then, I wanna take you through what my plan or my strategy would be if I had to start from day one with zero pounds in the bank. So knowing what I know now then, so I've been dropshipping for three years, advertising on Facebook for three years, would I still do dropshipping? Would I still use Facebook ads if I would then? What kind of products would I sell? What kind of store would I start? Um, and how would I get the money together then to actually start dropshipping and how much money would I actually need? So they're the kind of questions we're gonna be answering, but before we get into them, I just wanna quickly mention, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me in this video. If that's something that you might want to win, then all you have to do is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video, then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with that being said then, guys, let's get straight into it. So starting from the beginning then, forgive me if I keep Keep looking down I've just got some notes on my phone um, just to make sure I don't forget to mention anything so I'm starting from day one then knowing what I know now I've got zero pounds in the bank um, would I still do drop shipping so the short answer is yes um, just purely because in terms of scalability and how much time is actually involved, if you compare it to a lot of other business models, um, then it's quite an easy business to run. Like even now, like day to day, I probably spend like if I really wanted to, I could spend like an hour a day probably and that would be enough just to kind of keep things going and then anything above that is just pretty much extra so extra product research or extra time put into ads um, or if I'm working on something new but just to pretty much manage a dropshipping business it doesn't actually take that much so yes I would still do dropshipping then and if I had zero pounds in the bank then I need to get some money together so how would I do that and I would go about it one of two ways um, number one I would just simply flip things on eBay so you can get an app called profit bandit on your phone I think it's like a one-off payment of like $10. Um, and you can go into discount stores in the UK and the US, um, scan barcodes on products, and it will tell you then what it's selling for on Amazon and what it's selling for on eBay. So if something's like really cheap and it's on offer, um, you can scan it. And if you can buy it for say a pound, so to give you an example, then back in the day, um, we're going back like four years now when I used to do Amazon FBA. This is how I got started in e-commerce, believe it or not. Um, I went into one of the discount stores. I can't remember what it was, probably like a pound store because um, everything, uh, the, the product I bought was 99p, so I'm not sure. It's one of the discount stores anyway. And Amanda Holden's biography was in there for 99p. And I made the person work in there, go into the back and bring absolutely every single copy out for me. And I ended up buying it's something like 20 to 25 copies. Anyway, it was selling on Amazon for 11.99, I believe. So I sent them all into an Amazon fulfillment center. Um, undercut Amazon themselves and they sold out within the space of like two weeks I think it was and I made a pretty much like a pretty like, healthy chunk of profit another thing I did as well is I went into Costco um, and they were selling these test papers and it was coming up to like mock week where kids would be doing mock tests and I ended up buying something like 45 copies because that was literally all I could afford to buy um, and again they sold out all within like the space of two or three weeks and I made some pretty decent money so in terms of like getting that quick turnaround and building up the cash in your bank account quite quickly, then flipping things on Amazon and eBay is definitely one of the things I would do. The second thing I would do then is start a social media marketing agency. So try and get as many clients on board as possible because I know Facebook ads pretty well. I'm pretty confident I could go to almost any business and be able to bring in more business for them than they would have to pay me. So again, that would be enough way I would generate cash. Now, even though I'm pretty confident I can make a decent living doing that, um, the reason I would still go across into e-com and drop shipping is purely because um, number one, I don't like working for other people and with a social media marketing agency as well, you're working for other people. Um, if you don't provide a service that's good enough quality for them, then they essentially can tell you what to do or whatever. Um, and I just don't like that at all. And the other thing as well is that with a social media marketing agency, you only get paid when you're working with us. Whereas with e-commerce, you can sleep in till like one, two o'clock in the afternoon, look at your phone and you've made some money. So that's, that's pretty much how I would go about gathering up some cash, but the ultimate goal would be to get into e-com as soon as possible. In terms of how much money I'd want to save up um, before I moved across, um, the short answer is as much as possible, but as a very minimum, nowadays I would say 600 pounds if you plan on using Facebook ads, preferably a bit more. Um, the reason I say 600 pounds then is because um, I would now today invest in a paid theme 
because it's gonna give you the edge over probably the majority of stores. In fact, it'd be quite interesting to know what percentage of stores only use free themes. Um, so just using a paid one then would give you that immediate advantage and make you look that much professional. Um, back in the day, like a year, two years ago now, um, I never used a paid theme, but nowadays because there's just so many kind of of those generic general stores out there or those generic branded stores, that a paid theme is just gonna make you stand out from everybody else. In terms of paid themes then, which ones would I recommend? Um, there's kind of like three main ones. Number one is Shoptimized. Um, I'm not affiliated with either of these, by the way, but number one is Shoptimized. I really like the way you can customize their stores and kind of like the clarity and the contrast of the colors they use. Um, and then the other two you can actually get from the Shopify theme marketplace as well. Um, they're called Envy and Parallax. So make sure you go and check those ones out. And you're looking at about, I believe on the Shopify um, theme marketplace. I think they're $120, whereas Shoptimize is a bit more expensive than that. And I think the base package is about 160 or 180. So now that I've got some money in the bank then, and I'm ready to start my store, what kind of store would I start? What kind of products, etc.? So knowing what I know now, then I would go for a branded store in a niche that is a pretty decent size, but it's just like, it's less competitive. It's untapped. Um, and a good example of this then would be the golfing niche. Um, because I'm interested in golf, I watch a lot of golfers on YouTube. There's a lot of influencers on YouTube, a lot of influencers on Facebook and Instagram. And hardly any of them are selling somebody else's products. It's just a really good untapped market. And they get a ton of views as well. Like the potential or the overall size of the niche is absolutely huge. Another good example of this one as well is the hiking and camping niche. Again, on YouTube, there's a ton of people who all they do is make videos and talk about different camping like gadgets, not even ones they're trying to sell, just ones like trying to help people out. They talk about places they've gone camping, etc. Again, it's just a really, um, they get a ton amount of views and it's not a very competitive niche so there's definitely a lot of potential in terms of the products then i would start my store with pod clothing and i would make i would have like t-shirts and jumpers etc apparel with like funny memes on so you only have to google like funny memes to do with golf and there's just a ton of different ones that are really funny and the reason i would start with pod then is because print on demand by the way is because it's a quick way then of building your brand up and building that trust and reliability with your customers because you can deliver the goods really quickly. And then once you start to grow to a substantial size, so you've got a good customer base, maybe 5,000 emails, um, a couple of thousand likes on your Facebook page, then I would start to introduce drop shipping products. Now, the reason I would play it this way then is because when it comes to building a brand, then a brand is built on its reputation, its reliability, its quality, and ultimately then its customers trust that it has in that brand. And when you're delivering goods that take two to three weeks, um, sometimes a bit quicker, sometimes a bit longer, um, it can be difficult to build up that reputation and that quality and that trust with your customers. Whereas if you sell them a t-shirt first, that's really funny and it arrives within a few days, then you've already got that trust, you've already got their recommendation, you've already got a good review, you've already got their like on Facebook, you've already got them showing their t-shirt to their mates. It goes back to the point that I mentioned in a couple of other videos ago where if you sell a product to somebody in a certain niche, then the chances are they know other people in that niche, which they're gonna then talk to you about. Um, so for example, well, within the golf niche, because I'm interested in golf, I know a ton of people who also play golf. So if I was to buy a golf product of somebody and it was really good, the chances are I would show my friends it, I would tell my friends it, show my mates, etc. cetera. So um, word of mouth and all in all, it just kind of adds up to, to essentially just building a brand. And that's why I'd start with POD first. So once I built, um, a set or just like a half decent brand. So like I said, 5,000 emails, 2,000 likes on Facebook. Then I would start moving into dropship products because once you've provided service once, um, that's good. Even if your item takes a little bit longer than expected to arrive, then because you've provided that service once, really good for them, um, they'll be more forgiving. Now, I just want to quickly mention, in fact, that Going back to the beginning, if I had more money to start with, then I would just go straight to drop shipping and probably test a product for like three to four weeks. And if it was successful, then just go straight into um, order fulfillment. So buying in bulk, um, getting them shipped to a fulfillment center, uh, and then doing it that way basically. So you can still run your business from a laptop. Now I have recently partnered with a fulfillment center in the UK. If that's something that you guys wanna see more content on or want details about, then all you have to do is leave a comment below. And if I get quite a few people asking me for it, then I can do a video on that topic, no problem. So now that I've got my store, I've got my products, how would I go about marketing my store? To begin with then, I would start with influencers purely because I chose the golf niche and influencers are just 
crazily untapped and hardly any of them. I don't think I've seen a single one, in fact, selling other people's products or selling their own products. I would try and get as many influencers on board. And when I say influencers, then I don't just mean Instagram, I mean YouTube and I mean Facebook as well. You don't hear a lot of people talking about those, um, but definitely um, all three platforms essentially. And I would try and get them on board in one or two ways. So number one would just be a one-off post. So it could be on Instagram or on YouTube. It could just be one video of them uh, mentioning your t-shirt, wearing it. Uh, when it comes to influencer marketing, then the best way you can get them to advertise your product is to show them with your products themselves, not just a post, but actually show them using your product or wearing your product, whatever it is. And the second way I would try and get them on board then is as an affiliate. So send them a unique link there's certain apps in the app store there's one called panda box or something like that i can't really remember but there's a couple of decent ones you can set up unique affiliate links for each and individual influencer the app will take care in terms of profit percentages and splitting it out evenly and the reason this is probably the best way to do it is because if they get paid a commission on every sale, then it encourages them to keep advertising your store. Whereas if it's just a one-off post, there's just one post and then all forgotten about. Whereas if it's an affiliate link, then the more they post about you, the more money you make and the more money they make. And once I've got quite a few influencers on board then, and I've perhaps seen about 500 sales, I would then for sure move into Facebook ads because Facebook ads, uh, they become easier the more data that pushes through them like at the beginning they can be really really difficult to get some sort of momentum going without spending quite a lot so you can try and get as many influencers on board for free setting them up as affiliates and then obviously have your pixel installed have your custom audiences set up and then all the data that comes through all the custom audiences that start to build up you can then start to use them for retargeting um, look like audiences i mean the golf niche you can target pretty well on facebook anyway um, and that would be pretty much how i would start there and that would be my strategy start with influencers get them to drive as much traffic as possible, build up say 500 sales as a minimum, um, and then migrate into Facebook ads and just use the data you've got from Instagram to pretty much build on what you're doing. Once things started to go pretty well then, in terms of where I would go from there, uh, if the apparel was going really well, I would definitely start to look to source that in bulk purely because print on demand is really good and it's really efficient, but it's actually expensive too. So t-shirts, you're looking at probably about eight quid for the bare minimum delivered to a customer in the UK. Whereas you can get like a t-shirt probably twice as good quality printed the exact same. But if you order 500 units, then it's probably going to cost you less than a pound. And that really is how cheap it is. That really is how much it increases your profit margins. And you can get 500 units sent to a fulfillment center um, and they'll just charge you it's usually about 40p to do the picking and packing and then obviously the postage cost on top of that. But because they're fulfilling a ton of orders or more than what you would be in your business solely alone, they actually get favorable costs as well. So they'll actually be shipping it out cheaper than what you could ship it out yourself because they're, because they're shipping thousands of orders every week instead of say a few hundred. So in terms of starting from day one, then that would be my strategy. Um, I think I've covered absolutely everything. Um, if there's any questions on this at all, or if you're just beginning out and you feel like this video has helped you, uh, make sure you let me know, leave a comment down below. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I really do appreciate everybody watch these videos all the way through um, and if you are still watching all i ask then is you simply leave this video a like and if you want to be entered into that raffle for a chance to win a one-to-one -one call then uh, make sure you leave a comment down below as well and with that being said then let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video so here we are then guys on the previous video and i've just realized i was wearing the same t-shirt in that video but please believe me when i say this it has actually been washed since then um, but anyway, if you haven't watched this video, make sure you go and check it out. There's quite a lot of useful information in that, that dropshipping is getting more difficult. And there's certain things you have to do now, certainly compared to what I used to have to do two, three years ago when I started, it's certainly a lot more competitive, a lot more difficult um, to succeed. So if you haven't watched that yet and you are just getting started, make sure you go check it out. So anyway, I'm just going to take the video URL up here, head over to our comment picker, get YouTube comments, 57 in a day. That is, I'm pretty sure that's like a record. So thank you very much. Please do keep the support coming. We're going to be at 10K subs in no time, I'm sure. And the winner of the previous video then is Anesh. So thank you very much for coming to my video. Make sure you reach out on Instagram. We can get that call arranged. And guys, if you want to stop trying your luck or you've been commenting on my videos for weeks and weeks, but you just want to get straight down to business and book a call, you can do so. Just make sure you check out the links in the video description below. And with that being said then guys, I'll see you in the next one.